Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating a radical expression based on a polynomial. So we're given that x squared minus 6x plus 1 is equal to 0, and we're supposed to evaluate square root of x minus 1 over square root of x. So based on the values we get from the first equation, we're going to evaluate the second expression. So I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to go ahead and solve the first equation, because why not? It's easy, it's a quadratic, we can use the quadratic formula, or completing the square, either way. x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 36, minus 4a, that will be 4, and divided by 2a, which is 2. 36 minus 4 is 32, the square root of 32 can be written as 4 root 2. 6 plus minus 4 root 2 divided by 2. And we can simplify it and write it as 3 plus minus 2 root 2. Nice. Now, which x value should we be using? I think it doesn't matter, but I could be wrong. Let's go ahead and do the following. Let's just check one of these values first, and then we're going to maybe check the other one as well. So these are the possible x values. Let's take the first one first. 3 plus 2 root 2. Now, remember, our goal is to evaluate square root of x minus 1 over square root of x. If x is 3 plus 2 root 2, we can go ahead and write that under the radical and evaluate this. You, if you want, you can also just uh, stick to this, find out what it is in the simplest terms, and then just plug it in here. Same idea. So we're going to be focusing on this first. What is the square root of 3 plus 2 root 2. How do you square root that? How do you square root a radical? In other words, how do you denest it? And there's a way to do it. Let me show you. We can go ahead and write this as 2 plus 1 plus 2 times root 2 times 1. And then we're going to write this as root 2 squared. And this one as 1 squared. And this one as 2 times root 2 times 1. Now, what does that look like? If that's not clear to you, then call this A and call this B. You're going to get A squared plus B squared plus 2AB under the radical. And you should know that this is equal to A plus B quantity squared. In other words, this is square root of 2 plus 1 squared under the radical. And from here, the square root and the square, they're going to cancel out, leaving us with root 2 plus 1. So the square root of 3 plus 2 root 2 is root 2 plus 1. Of course, there's a shortcut for all of this. So instead of doing this, you can basically shortcut the whole process and write this as follows. We're basically looking for two things. First, we want the radical, the radical inside the radical, to have a 2 in front of it. And it does already have that. So we're good because we have a 2 here. Once we get that, we can go ahead and factor the number inside the innermost radical. So in other words, we're finding two numbers whose product is 2 and whose sum is 3. And those numbers are 2 and 1. Because 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 times 1 is 2, right? After you find these numbers, your goal is to take them with the radicals. And of course, you must follow the sign. It's a plus sign. I have to have a plus sign here as well. So the answer would be root 2 plus root 1, or you can write it as root 2 plus 1. In other words, if you square root 2 plus 1, you'll get, you're going to get 2 plus 1 plus 2 root 2, which is 3 plus 2 root 2. That's why it's square root equals the expression inside. Make sense? No matter how you look at it, you're going to be able to find the square root and then simplify that way. So from here, we get the following. Let me go ahead and clear this area because I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. I already have a value. So it's going to be root 2 plus 1 minus 1 over root 2 plus 1. Now, we here, we do need co complex conjugates. I mean, not complex, radical conjugates. Let's multiply top and bottom by root 2 minus 1. And that gives us root 2 minus 1 in the numerator and the denominator will be from difference of two squares, 2 minus 1, which is 1. So this turns into root 2 plus 1 minus root 2 plus 1, double negation, 
turns that minus 1 into a plus 1. Root 2 cancels out and we end up with 2 as the answer. Nice. Now here's a question for you. Do you think if we use this, the other solution, would that make a difference? That's a good question, right? Let's go ahead and test it out. This would be root 2 minus 1 and this would be 1 over root 2 minus 1 which then you have to multiply by root 2 plus 1 over root 2 plus 1, which is 1. So this becomes root 2 minus 1 minus root 2 plus 1 divided by 1. And this is two, root 2 minus 1 minus root 2 minus 1. And this gives us negative 2. Uh-oh. I was expecting the same thing, but they turn out to be different. So do you think both of them are correct? Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method because second method give, can give us more insight into the process. Okay, what was the problem again? x squared minus 6x plus 1 equals 0. And we're supposed to evaluate root x minus 1 over root x. So the second method is actually pretty cool. That's why it is the second method. And here's how it works. I'm going to go ahead and isolate the 6x here because my goal is to divide both sides by x and to get a numerical value for x plus 1 over x, which is 6. Of course, x cannot be 0. We already know that, right? Because if x is 0, it's not going to satisfy this equation. So we got something nice, but how do we use that? What, what are we supposed to find? We're supposed to find square root of x minus 1 over square root of x. Great. How is that great? Well, whatever you're trying to find, you can set it equal to something, right? let's say a or maybe i don't know t okay and then square both sides squaring both sides is going to be super helpful because this is going to give you x plus one over x minus two times a b and then these two are going to cancel out leaving us with t squared and x plus one over x we already know that it's six so we can plug it in six minus two is equal to four so t squared equals four from here, we get two solutions, t equals 2 or t equals negative 2. And if you remember, t is what we're looking for because we called this t, remember? Square root of x minus 1 over square root of x was called t, and we just found it. So there seem to be two values for t, but do you think they're both good? And my question would be, if we had the plus sign, let's say they were hypothetically speaking, if they asked for this, then I would really make sure that the expression is positive for real x values. Of course, then there is the complex x values, which is a different story. But if x was real and I, would, I had this, then I would go for the positive solution only. But in this case, we do not have this requirement. So the question is, can this be less than 0? Right? That's a good question. Let's go ahead and make a common denominator. This means that... Square root of x is always positive. x minus 1 needs to be less than 0, which means x is less than 1. So if x is less than 1 because this is two-sided, then we will have a negative expression. Can, can x be less than 1? Yes. When you write it as uh, root 2 minus 1, that's definitely, definitely less than 1. Or am I looking at this one? Okay, never mind. This is my x value. So is 3 minus 2 root 2 less than 1? That's a good question. This is root 9, this is root 8, and yes, their difference is less than 1. Why? Because 1 less than square root of 9 is the square root of 4. They're very close. Anyways, this is pretty much it. I don't think I have an answer from Wolfram Alpha for this one. Sorry about that, I forgot. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.